Welcome to all of you. We are here in Fort Peace, Florida. And this is the month of March, the woman, month of the woman. So we have five distinguished ladies and we would like to speak to them. So uh, you are? Um, my name is Carol King and um, I've been living in uh, St. Lucie County for quite some time now. St. Lucie? Right? Yes, St. Lucie County. And, um, to in be Florida. Precise, uh -huh. Yes, in Florida, of course, um, in Port St. Lucie. And you are? My name is uh, Dr. Marie Ketin-Gerrier, and um, I practice family medicine, and I've been in Florida for 22 years in St. Lucie County. And you work as working in the veteran hospital. Right? I work in seeing veterans. Very, very good. And then? Yes, I am also a human I. Very good, very good. And very you are? Again. Okay. <laughs> I'm Pauline Jean Simon. I am an entrepreneur here in Florida. And I'm also uh, an accountant and licensed insurance agent. So mostly, my business we do insurance help people getting health insurance uh, throughout the state of Florida and I also do social work I am a radio host I host my home radio show for the past uh, we say almost 20 years I've been doing that and I'm going to continue to do it and also some uh, um, non-profit uh, I'm a member of a non-profit organization that help kids here and in media as well all right, my name is Goni Lewis Gordon. I was born and raised in Haiti, grew up in Miami. I go by Goni Gordon, that's my campaign, candidate name. I have a bachelor's degree in, this, in um, um, criminal justice, also have a business degree in business leadership for managers. I am an entrepreneur and I'm also a radio host. I do a show every morning, a finance education on the radio, where I tell people how to manage their money, because you know, we worked but we don't know where the money is going by the end of the year. And so you have to know how to manage your finances for you to be able to have money. And I take a great deal of educating my community because I think it's a wonderful work, to job to be done because even the Bible tell you that the people will perish because of lack of, lack of knowledge. So if you are making money and you cannot manage your money, Houston, we have a problem. So Goleen Gordon is here to help people manage their money and also has a real estate agent to help them to realize their American dreams by helping them found their dream home so they can enjoy their life with their family. Goleen Gordon, thank you. Thank you, Goleen. Very, very good. So uh, the question would be for all of you, you will answer the same questions as uh, I will ask you, can you elaborate on some of the greatest contributions you are making as women and state whether the contributions affect your local community or perhaps the whole county or state. So let us start with uh, Carol. Okay, um, yes. Normally I would say yes. Everything that um, I do do have an impact on our um, community um, here in Florida and even um, you know other places. Um, also, like um, the game, I am also um, a radio host, and what I do is educate um, the um, population, um, everybody, about you know unity, how to come together, how to work together. Um, that's that's what we do, and uh, I'm also in business and uh, in real estate, and to be precise, um, we um, you know rent houses and help you know the people who are in need, trying to work with the you know. Um, people who need, you know, house and maybe trying to work with them on the level, the way that, you know, we can um, also. So yes, we do help the community a lot because we are focusing also on young people, especially because we believe, I, I know they say the young people, they are the future. I always like to say they are the now <coughs> because the education for, for you to have, you know, the society, um, the tomorrow, you need to start the work with them now. So that's one of the reasons my focus also is on the young people. Thank you. Okay, as a physician and um, health educator, I see veterans 
and what I could say is um, where I work and um, the veterans are very, very much appreciative of my work and uh, as a woman and taking care of veterans who have been wounded during war and with a lot of other uh, medical problems, they are really appreciative of what I do, especially now when they see me and they are telling me what they go through because uh, every time they go to see it, to have a provider, usually it's every year they see someone else. I mean, the, they feel like there is no continuity of care. And uh, what I've been doing in the community, they see me, they've been seeing me again and again every year and they really appreciate my work. And um, I feel like a, almost like a giving back really to them for what they have done. But uh, anyway, um, I feel like I'm contributing something in the community and it is well appreciated. Yes, um, as an entrepreneur, um, I'm managing a mental health clinic where we provide service to the whole population, children for the team, um, and up. And we are in a partnership with the San Francisco Board, who send us referrals for children in need counseling. Um, we also partner with the Department of Children and Family. Um, to provide counseling to people in the services. All right, uh, for me, as an entrepreneur, we actually have uh, 18 full-time employees. So we can say that uh, we are proud for what we have done. And the agency that we were able to build, which is uh, an agency for Florida Blue, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, number uh, top 25 agency of Florida, this is a great deal that uh, we are Asian agency and we were able to make it to the top with so much hard work and help people get their insurance. Also, I was one of the um, CRA members, CRA's Community Development Agency for uh, Lakewood. The first Haitian that had the honor to be part of this board, they worked together with the city, the mayors and the uh, commissioners, and they, they were the one who elected me for that post, even it was a volunteer work but we do have a lot of work that we have to do. What is going on in the city? So how would they uh, they help with the community center, all of the stuff, so I was able to be part of that, and that was a, a great opportunity for me to serve uh, the community of Lakewood. Even through businesses, um, it, is, it is hard for the Haitian community, especially when they don't have somebody who speaks their language. Once they have that, they have somebody that can help them, manage the system. So once you come here, you're an immigrant, it is very hard for you. The language is already a barrier. So once um, you can help them cross that barrier, and that's a great thing for them. And I also help so many Haitian families get through um, Catholic education. So many of them think that it was untouchable. They were not able to go to private school. When I started educating them, yes, you can get help. You can bring your kids to school. We can help. Some can drop your kids and other ones will pick it up. So between us, we start bringing uh, uh, the Haitian student to the school. And with the help of Father Eve, too, Father Eve done a lot of things with the Haitian community with, through scholarship, through uh, awareness, telling them, hey, we can get the uh, Catholic education. Once you're Christian, so uh, the Catholic education means a lot. I went to Catholic school all my life from uh, uh, pre-K, from first grade to 12th grade. So I know how important that is and how great Catholic education is. So be able to help other Haitian kids here get that same level of education, that means a lot. So that's what we've been doing uh, and we'll continue um, to do that as we go forward. I believe everything we do is helping the community and everything we do is beneficial to the community. As, a, as an entrepreneur, like I mentioned, we have helped thousands of people and I have my career in the banking industry. I actually left the banking industry when I decided to run for mayor for the city of Boynton Beach. I'm glad that Pauline involved also because I'm also a member of the CRA board which is the Community Redevelopment Agency, also a member of Planning and Development. 
So those area is also good also because I you educate your community. We tell the community how to get involved because when you get involved in these boards, you understand what's going on. You understand how the decisions are making. And every single decision that makes in the area, it affects us as Haitian or either we, whether we were born in Haiti or born in here, you're still Haitian, every decision affects us. And it's good to be part of it. And it's good to be giving back to the community. Giving, there's nothing better than giving back to your community. Like I mentioned before, I went to Haiti and spent 25 days volunteering my own time without nobody asking me or giving me a dime for it. This is another thing that we are not doing as much in our community is volunteering. We want people to understand when you volunteer, you're giving back to the community. That's a great deal. It is a great deal to do that. And educating, educating is a big asset in the community. When you tell people how to save their money or where to find this resource that they need, it's unbearable. It's, you, it's, you'll be amazed of things you do when you are helping your community one way or the other. Me, I love to give, I love to help. Whatever I have belongs to somebody else because I didn't have it. God gave it to me, it gives it to me to share, including my knowledge. So that's why I help everyone that comes my way. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, what walk of life you come from. You come my way, I will help you. And that's why we live our lives helping everyone and anyone in the community. As a radio host, you, you won't imagine how many lives that you touch. You could be talking to one person face to face, but when you're behind that mic, people are hearing you from all over, from New York, from Haiti. With the internet, social media nowadays, when you're doing something, and it just spread within, a, within seconds, what you say spread. And that's why we also I always keep in mind that you are, I am a role model for the community. And we are all a role model for the community. And what we do affect everyone in the community. So that's what we do. We help the community however we can, whether it's either buying a house, I help them get the house. But when they come, I'm like a counselor. I, I get to hear about what's going on at home, and I have to counsel them about what's going on at home. I have to hear what's, what's going on at work. I don't like my job. My boss is this. I have to sit down and talk to these people. So as an agent, I would say I'm an agent of the people because I do counseling. I do everything that it entails when it comes to dealing with people, immigration. I do that. I don't work with an organization or I don't have a nonprofit per se, but they need their immigration forms filing. Hey, Goldene Gordon will do it for you as long as you have money to send it to immigration because I don't have the money <laughs> to pay for it to send for you. But that's what we do. Whatever we have, whatever we can offer to the community, that's what we do. We offer that service to the community. And we're just hoping that everyone can do the same thing because in that way, then we can create a better community. Okay, good. So now can you describe some of the challenges you are facing and how would it impact or benefit the community if those issues were resolved? So you want to let me start with you. <laughs> okay, um, the, challenges, the challenges. Some of the challenges that we are facing um, in the community, especially as uh, women, um, we can say it's more difficult for us to get access to certain things than it is um, to, to men. And this is, I mean, being in business, being, you know, having non profit organization, it is a huge, huge, huge uh, problem for, I mean, me, I mean, I know every woman have, you know, the same problem, like to access, like, you know, some of the, you know, uh, resources, people, you know, they, because you are a woman, you know, they look at you, it's like you, you doing this, it's like you don't belong in that position. Let me put it that way. In a way, to me, that's, that's a huge um, challenge. And I will add to that, uh, that's a real challenge when you're a woman. Thank God I have my husband, who's also my partner, is always there with me and back me up. I remember when I founded the organization, um, Association des Haïtiens Vivants Etrangers pour le Développement d'Haïti, and um, I had a meeting. In the meeting, there's one gentleman who came, used to be a politician in Haiti. And he said, I love your idea. 
I, I enjoy what you're saying. I want to be part of it. I want to help you. But I simply wish you another woman because I can follow a woman. He said that straight to my face. I had that thought, yeah. I cannot follow a woman. Yes. Because of that, I will help you, but nobody needs to know that I'm helping. So that's what you face. Not only you face that everywhere you go, you feel like uh, uh, this shouldn't be you. You belong to the kitchen. You belong yes. to at home. And uh, at the same time, you, your parents, you're dealing with your kids. That want you to be there for them. Mm -hmm. That want you to be at, at, at the um, uh, basketball game. They want you to be, uh, my, my kids sing, sing at the choir. Whatever time they're performing at the church, they want you to be there. You cannot be at all of them. You are dealing with that as a mom that you want to give much time with your kids. You can do it. And at the same time, when you go out there as an entrepreneur, you feel like left out. Yes. You don't belong there. You shouldn't be there. Shouldn't, it shouldn't be you. So you have to do double work. Double work to excel. Double work that society can accept you as not only an entrepreneur, but you are a woman. Mm -hmm. So every time, no, you're a woman. They put the title on you. So I can say um, for the Haitian community, we still have that uh, mentality. Women should not work in certain place. And they even use the Bible. Mm -hmm. after yes. They even use the Bible to tell us we belong to a certain place. Yes. That's what God said. So that's why they're telling us all the time, at least you're here, and Bishop and Psyche is here, can probably clarify this for us, because they tell us we belong to a certain place. God tells us, hey, you cannot be president, you cannot be a senator, because God said women, men should not follow women. Isn't that true? Because we have the same potential. God even said, if you don't, if we can't find no one to do the work, he will have the walk, the rock, talk. So not, if the rock can talk for God, Tell me about, I'm a human. God will not use me to do his work. So when the men are failing, huh, why wouldn't God use his people, use women to do the work? Mm -hmm. Actually, I believe we women are very strong. We are capable of doing multiple things. And uh, we're not saying men are not uh, strong, they can do it, but we can do it. Because we have too many. I am, I am, I'm not going to say so much. But at least Father Eve is here, so you will explain. Because they, they use the Bible to set us apart. They do that all the time. Yes. Challenging is first being Haitian is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Being a woman is another challenge. Well, I can use a perfect example. During my election, what I was selling was a name. I didn't put no picture. Mm. On my, I did it on my flyers, but on my postcards, yard signs, everything, I had to put just my name. Golene Gordon. Why? Because I know that there are certain people I want to attract. They may not be attracted to a woman, like Pauline mentioned. Some people may not want to follow a woman. Does that mean women don't have leadership? Well, this is how I go in board and put it. In the house, it was mommy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Daddy's at work, mm -hmm. doing all the chores, bringing the money. Who knows about the kids? Mm -hmm. Mommy. Who knows when they're sick? Mommy. Who knows when they have to go to sleep? Mommy. Who knows about the school, the games? Mommy. That means leadership starts mm -hmm. in the house at home with mommy. The dad is the protection, the provider. Mm -hmm. And you, when a child comes to, to, to daddy, you ask for something. What they say? Go to mommy. Mm -hmm. It's because mommy has the leadership. Women has a lot of has leadership that the world need to recognize that they do have a lot to offer. And I'm going to tell you guys something. The world cannot move without us. Without <laughs> that is true. It cannot move without us. Yes, it is challenging. We receive a lot of challenge. But I think what's the most important thing is, is not to let any of that stop us. We're going to, you know, we have to continue. You have the goal, you have the desire, you have the drive and the determination. Yes, it's going to be tough. It is challenging. When, you know, you're a woman, you're running to be the mayor of 76,000 people in Boynton Beach. You think they're going to let you do that? But you know what? We had over 1,500 people that voted for us. Not in, the, in an election where there's not too many people vote in the area. Municipal election, a lot of people don't vote. But after that, I received phone calls from clergy, men, pastors, men. Like, okay, now you have over 1,500 people who voted for you. They're looking forward to see your leadership. What do you have to offer them? So what we have to understand as women, no matter how challenging, 
we get a lot of challenge but don't let anything stop us because even though they may not want to acknowledge it say okay you woman you minority because i know i normally say i'm minority like four times women <laughs> Haitian, black <laughs> <laughs> so but the, the the main thing is is to i'm keeping my eyes on the price and i think that's all of us every everybody whatever you facing whatever challenges that you're facing don't let that become a burden on your life. Don't let that stop you anywhere. Just keep on moving and do what you got to do. Overcome all your challenges. And something that is very important, I would like for the world to know, it's not like we women, we're trying to take over the men's position. Because as Polly mentioned in the Bible, yes, the men, they are their place, they are the leader, they are the provider. But we want to bring our contribution. Because we were created, you know, as... Part, exactly, uh, as partners, you know, so we bringing our contribution. Don't try to stop us. Don't try to say that we don't have our place there. Um, when we again go in the Bible, who went to the, you know, Sunday morning, who went there to the tomb when Jesus it was, a woman. it was a woman? Who went to tell them this is what she saw? It was a woman. So we have the first miracle of the woman. Esther. <laughs> Yeah, Judas, exactly. yeah. Judas you know, so, Esther, yes. uh, and the sister of Moses. Okay, you know, there's a lot of great women, great women yes. in the Bible as well. Yes. Exactly. So, Doctor Market Lee, what the challenges you think in your field? Actually, um, after hearing these three really women talking about the challenges facing uh, women and. Um, I agree with them, and I would say at this point, let's say um, for me particularly, I um, when I practice my uh, profession, I mean there are certain things really that we know there are uh, at one point men could not do, I mean women could not do, but when we face those uh, problems. I mean, we overcome all of these things. Patients really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And they realize that they say, always, I would rather see a woman provider than a man. <laughs> because they feel like um, I mean, we are doing a better job. But, I mean, overall, I mean, men would try to overcome. But thank God, I mean, we are there. And then um, they appreciate what we are doing. They have the feeling, the tender care that you're giving to them, yeah. a man. The mother, the mother, exactly. Yeah, for yes, Marcel. Yes, Marcel. Yeah, for challenge. Um, it's um, an old um, business. I remember when we first started um, to get into the mental health collaboration with the Cypresses mm -hmm. to board, and uh, when we send the paper, they saw more value. They asked me how much. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he said, that's my wife. She's the administrator of uh, you can talk. He said, oh, I thought it was this small thing. You in that collaboration? Um, he said, yes, we are. And then um, at the school system, now whenever they have a hard case, kids self harm or uh, the suicidal thought they mm -hmm. have, they send them to us. Because mm -hmm. whenever we receive those cases, we take action right away. Mm -hmm. We call the parents, we um, contact, we get them engaged so they can start the service. Um, when every day we receive, oh, it's a pleasure to work with us because all those cases, they send them to us because we act fast and um, so we can provide the service. Very good. So as more women are entering fields, that were dominated mostly by males, why is eco pay still an issue? <laughs> because there's not a woman in charge. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have, we don't have a woman <laughs> president yet. Yeah. <laughs> we, yes. we don't have a woman president yet. But I think there are some, um, there are a policy, the policy that are in place, it will take time for us to get rid of them. Um, so women can be treated equally in a workplace. They always, the more that we have men that have this mentality, 
it's in the more that women need to fight. So women need to be united to know that we have our place and then we need to get paid as much as they get paid. And right now, we can say that we're making progress. We have many women around the world that are uh, great leaders. We have great senators. And even here in the US, you have uh, so many uh, women that are uh, um, running, for running for offices and that one. And Haiti, actually, they are making progress too. They say uh, the laws that the new, the amended constitution say at least 33% of any organization have to be women. Yes. It hasn't been that, it's not there yet, but at least the policy is there. So we're working toward it. We have to make progress. And as women too, we need to encourage other women to come to the workplace. And they don't make it easy. When you live in a country like the United States, for example, it's a great country, beautiful country, but it's so demanding. Where do you have the time? If you want your kids to have great education, someone has to sacrifice themselves. Mom has to stay home or work less hours so dad can go to work if you want your kids to succeed. So in that case, you're not going to have as many men and women in the workplace. Many women choose to stay home even when the doctors, mm -hmm. even when the lawyers, simply to educate their children. So if you take that into account, you're always going to see a discrepancy between how much men make and women because we have more men working mm -hmm. than women. That is true. And well, that's what you say. That's one of the reasons to uh, me becoming a photographer. Uh, it's for me to be able to manage my time so while my husband is working so I can be with my, with my children. So That's right. Then you, you make less. So you can save your exactly, kids. Exactly, because sometimes I can have a client, you know, um, calling me, okay, it's a wedding. And here I am, my husband has to work. What do I have to do? I have to choose not to go shoot the wedding, and my husband can go to work, and I can be what's with my kids. So. One thing I will add farther is that as women, when it comes, because we know that is an issue. It's an issue all over the United States or out of the country. What we have to understand as women, you got to know your value, how much you worth. Because I remember when you getting a job, men normally negotiate. Mm -hmm. But we women, I, I, I don't know why we don't. And this is what we have to develop, a negotiation skills. You're going to apply for this job, first you have to do research, salary.com, or how much a pediatrician makes or a, a, a mental health counselor how much do, do that do, you know do that person make so before you go for the job because that's the only way because you're going to have your protection and the income or the the money that you worth or you think you deserve is by knowing how much you can get paid for what you're going to do and if you go to the job they said okay the yearly salary is fifty thousand dollars when you did your research you saw that it's six between sixty and seventy five do not afraid to ask them for 75. What's the worst that could happen? Either they will tell you no, and then you land at 60 or 65 or 70. But if we go to a job, they're like, okay, $10 an hour. You're like, okay, thank you. I want the job so much. No, no, you have to know how much you're worth and how much you want yourself to be paid and your value of your education, your time, and what you have to offer. What I would say, because I went to a job interview with a company that I was already working with, and I negotiated my salary. The lady looked at me, and then uh, I said, we negotiated. She went this way, I went that way. Finally, we land in the middle. We land somewhere where I wanted to be. Because I believe that if you have to learn, especially in the job market, where people is not giving you what you're worth, you have to learn to put a number on you that will be able to, to help you financially. Because most people don't like their job, especially women. Why? Because of they're not making money. If you're not making money, you're not going to perform well because you're going to think that, well, I hate this job. I can't even pay my bills. But if you're trying to get, I remember when I negotiated my raise, it could be a downfall, but it's okay. When, when I negotiated the salary for me to start on the job, when it's time for raise, they didn't give me one. And the sole reason was that I negotiated my rate. So it could have a downfall, but it would still be a, a good downfall because if you land somewhere where you really want to get paid and you ask for something that you're satisfied with, 
it's okay because the other people that's there, if they never ask, they never receive because they never ask. Because when you ask, then you might be able to fall in a position where, okay, well, I know they're going to, they pay these men $80 an hour and I'm asking them for 82 If you don't get 80 you get 70 75 you'll be good too. Just learn to negotiate The thing is, I think also the fact that um, they don't negotiate is the fear of the downfall, like you yeah. say, because you're thinking, okay, I need that job so bad and it, they pay that much and you th you are lucky to have a, a woman you know you could be talking mm -hmm. back and forth um just imagine you have a man sitting there well this is the pay this is what we do mm -hmm. and you know and you're thinking about okay the next man walk in there and they're gonna give them the job because they give them priority over you mm -hmm. so therefore in you know in your mind you're like um i need the job so let me take it for now and taking later you'll be able to negotiate yeah, I think but that we gotta, that's true, too. what you mentioned is true, but we have to be able to prove ourselves. No, I agree. I yes. agree with that. Once we prove ourselves, because we can use example, like, okay, I know you're probably thinking if I were a man, you can use that as an example, but with, with you know, discrimination <laughs> and everything <laughs> now and then, you cannot go too far. <laughs> but what you can offer is like, okay, well, you know, I understand this is pretty high, but this is what I have to offer. You talk about yourself, of course. your experience your knowledge and your ability to do the job and you can sell yourself okay well if you want this job to be done that way i will suggest that you take me even though it's going to cost you a little bit more money but you might get more than what you <laughs> you're paying for it yeah very good so uh what uh, do we do as women to change the status quo of accepting a lower pay for doing the same work as our male counterparts I believe the first thing that we need to do, Father, is start at home. We we'll educate the children, uh -huh. we the women. We need to start educating our boys different than the girls. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the girls clean the house, the boys watch game, or they help mommy lift heavy stuff. Girls don't lift heavy stuff. Boys do that. We make difference between the girls and boys. So once we stop doing that, we educate both of them equally. So we tell, we teach our boys to treat women with respect. First of all, they have their mom. Mm -hmm. Would you respect me as your mom? Yes, then you treat other women with respect. So we need to start from there, teaching our boys to respect uh, uh, the sister, to respect the mother, and knowing that we are equal. It's not like because you're a boy, you have power, because believe it or not, men have extra power than women. If you're lifting something, I remember my son was nine years old, 10 years old, he's able to carry stuff that I am um, shaking to, to hold it. So we cannot, we, we, there's no, nothing for us to say that is not true. It is true. Men have extra strength than women, but that doesn't mean they are superior to women. So they have their contribution, we have our contribution. A lot of time, since I have a pair, I have a boy, I have a girl. My girl is very, very mature. She doesn't need nobody to do to tell her what to do and to do her homework. My boys need more help to do that. You got to do your homework. Remember to do it. My daughter doesn't need that. So girls are usually more organized than than boys. But I told them, if you guys work together, you are each other's strength. Where um you your weakness is your sister's strength. Your sister's uh, uh, weakness is your strength. So put yeah. that together, yeah. see how much stuff you can do. Once we realize that, that we all are, are equal partners and we contribute, whatever we contribute, we help each other. We help each other become world. That's why we said we need men, we need women. The world cannot function without women. The world cannot function without men. And once men stop stopping women from developing the, cap uh, the capability, then we will have a better world because they will be able to give to give to the full potential. What right now we're not doing that. What do you see? You also see any woman that is successful most of the time, they have a man behind them. Behind any successful woman, there is a great man. So we're not gonna say because the men that really believe in the woman, they allow them to be successful. Yes. So you also need that. And other people that don't see that as a as a, a potential as a gift, they have to start looking.
looking to the mirror. See other couples that are successful, other people that are successful, they allow the woman. So they, they're not like, oh, I, I don't cook, I'm a man. So you cook, you clean. But they share the housework. Whatever needs to be done, each, each, each other um, share it. This couple usually have better life because one is not oppressing the other one. So I, I believe once it starts at home, you need to start at home, either through your family, through your marriage, either through the way you educate your children, and after that, we're gonna go to the policy. Hey, vote, be involved. If we need things to change, we cannot sit down and start crying. Oh, I need things to change. I need the policy to change in favor of women. Where are we women? Get out, vote, organize, participate. So I'm pretty sure 50 years from now, we're not going to have that conversation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And yes, I do agree with you starting at home. Yeah. And, uh, like the other day, I have my 14-year-old boy. I sat him down exactly the same thing. I was asking him the same question. Do you love me as mm -hmm. your mother? Do you respect me as your mother? Then, you know, teach him how to respect your girl's friend, uh -huh. you know, how to respect women. So like that when they when he go up i know that he's going to see women on a different view and yes we need to come together as well as women because for the women to go out there and know how powerful they are how we can change things because we can if we come together again and the education through radio like you say tv whatever the uh, uh, resources that we have we need to use it to empower one another because uh, one thing among uh, women we can see so often we are beating up on the others so much like we cutting you know trying to cut the grass trying to you know pull the wall on the we we comparing a lot if this woman is successful i'm afraid of her because she's being successful automatically you're successful you're becoming my enemy you know we shouldn't be seeing things that way because if we need a change listen we have to be the change so that's that's the way i believe it Father, to answer your question, I think what we need to know is learn the value of money. The kids need to learn the value of money. Even us right now as grown up, we need to know the value of money and what uh, what we worth. And that's the only way this rages issue that we have that man is getting paid more than we. You go to school to become a dentist. The men go to school to become a dentist. You guys receive the same education, the same license, the same everything. It's only fair for you to get paid the same amount of money. Yes, they go in to try not to give it to you, but you know your self-worth. You mentioned something earlier, Carol, which is good because we more focus on I need the job. Mm -hmm. I want the job and the fear of us not getting the job. We're afraid to negotiate to get what we really worth. And I think if we stick to it, because you know what, one day, Somebody will give me what I'm worth. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. going to keep looking. Apply for a thousand jobs until somebody give you because it's not an only in the Haitian community we have that issue. It's all over and that's an issue that talked about in the United States all over. Why men are getting more money than women. And we are doing the same jobs and we can actually do it better because sometimes women bring something into the job, job place that like we at home. I could go at a restaurant, I'm eating, I know somebody's going to come and clean the table, but I still clean it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not my job. Because we're we able to give more at times in a job, so it's up to us to let them know, this is what I can do, and I feel like I deserve this. And have your research in hand, like I said, I mean, this job paid this, and we'll get this if you're not able to give it to me at that time. Then maybe on a raise or somehow in the future, we negotiate up. But once we know the value of money and the value of self-worth, then we might be able to remove that fear and just taking the job and the fear of negotiating might stay away from us. But we need to teach ourselves that I worth this, I am worth this, I can get this, and I am not going to stop until I get it. And I think eventually, just like the kids, you tell the kids don't do something, don't do something, eventually they stop doing it and become part of them. They have to become part of us to let us know that if the man is doing the same job, they can make this amount of money. We're doing the same job, we can make the same amount of money too. But we have to go for it for us to get it. Usually we have to go extra months too. Women are so good to do entrepreneurship more. 
we usually stick on uh, getting a job, trying to find a job. What about we create the job? Once we have more women creating jobs, so the environment will be better for the women as well. I remember when I entered my field as a licensed insurance agent, the companies under my name, even my husband and I, we own the company. And then I met with a lady when we were uh, at the meeting and she said, girl, you are the wrong spot. It is not a woman field. A lady, she said, I am here. I know how I'm struggling because they, I'm a woman. They will give um, someone else better contract. They will get better benefit. I'm like, I don't have, I am a woman, but I do not think like a woman. So let's see how that's gonna go. Before two years, when I am at that meeting, I am the only woman at the table with the men. They give me my spot because I work for it. I work extra much. Let me tell you, I, there are five days in the week, I work at five different counties each day. So I, the office that is closer to me is 45 minutes from me. So I drive two hours in and three hours to go to my offices. So I work as hard as the men could work and gain my place at that table. Because usually you can request it, please respect me. I am a woman, I want this, but they won't give it to you. Yeah, you need yes, to so. work hard and you need to go for it. And what I know, men have money mentality. The minute that they see that you can bring them the dollar, oh yeah, they will, they will squeeze <laughs> over and give you your spot. So you need to work hard and get that spot. Not only reclaim it, but work for it. Once you work for it, they will give it to you. That's what I believe. So women, do not stop. Work hard. Find, uh, um, get your entrepreneurship idea. Be creative. You can create business. If you can have a, 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 be a designer, be whatever you can be, a doctor, but have that uh, entrepreneurship mentality, and then you create a job for other people, they will be successful. For example, I have a small business. I'm not a rich woman. 18 employees, we have the policy. Women that are pregnant in our company have at least sex with pay. Some big companies don't do that. We give them sex with pay. We give them two weeks if they say they have to take care of their kids, go to school, eh, to the doctor. I pay them. I don't say because you can come to work, you don't get paid. But why? I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. I understand. No, yes. I understand the situation that I can be at work and they call me, you got to come get your kids. Oh, what do I do? So they're scared they can lose their job. Okay. In my business, those women do not have to be scared if they have to go get their kids at, at, at school because they have a problem. Why? Because there's a woman on top of that company. So that's what we need to do. Create more company, create more businesses, and make the environment more friendly for women. Very good. So as women practicing in professions where the majority of the colleagues are males, in your opinion, are women's voices being heard? Well, I can use this, my election, as an example, because <laughs> this just happened. <laughs> I was the only woman running, um, you know, uh, for mayor, the only Haitian woman running for mayor with a whole bunch of guys. And the way I did it when I started, in, in Boynton Beach, when there is an election, nobody knows there is an election. You just know when people get elected. Some people don't even know there was a government. 76,000 people. Well, what I started doing, this is something like Pauline mentioned, you have to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Right now, everybody, blanc, white, black, American, Haitian, everybody knows Pauline Boyd. And the way I did it by proving myself. In every single corner in the city of Boynton Beach, there's a sign that says Golden Boyd. So that was, that's how I was able to prove myself. It's men dominated. There's plenty of men in the camp uh, as candidate. But the only name they started seeing around was Golden Gordon. Well, this is what the men did afterwards. Once I start putting my sign all over, he came with big signs, <laughs> giant signs, like, okay, she's trying to be seen. I got to see more than she's. And of course, he's a man. So there's a way they're always trying to, you know, cover you. Like, you the woman, you gotta be in the lower level. But what I did, I got more signs, and eventually I had to get some bigger signs too. So you mm -hmm. have to keep on proving yourself, proving that you can do it. And I even received a phone call from somebody who works for the city of Boynton Beach. They're like, congratulations, because you keep up with him, <laughs> with the level of marketing that you're doing, with the levels of signs and the big signs, whatever he trying to, he trying to lower you, put you down, but you were right there competing with him and put yourself in the same level. 
And that also gains some respect. So we have to keep on proving ourselves like Pauline mentioned and everybody else has mentioned. You are a female, you gotta work harder, you gotta prove yourself. Just keep on proving yourself and then one day you're going to have to enjoy your success of your hard work and proving who you are, what you can offer and what you should get or what are you worth. Because you're the only one that knows how much you're worth. And by proving yourself, then we can get into your worth, um, your self-worth one day, eventually. Yeah. So, you want to add anything? Uh, I think these girls, I mean, they are great. <laughs> <laughs> and all that I could think of, I mean, they are very mentioning. And um, what I would emphasize on the most would be really to know the value of yourself and take this also um, to the end, you know, as they say, you know what, what you're worth and then you go for it and you will achieve a you know, really uh, yes. goals. Yes. Very good. So do you wish there were more women working in your field or is it satisfactory? Which field, if any, would you like to see more women? Policy. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see more women in politics. That's yes. where the changes, I that's agree. where the policies are made. I would love yes. to see more women yeah. running for senators. And that's where the power is. Actually. Yeah, that's where the power is. Yeah. That's what can change things. That's what can shape things. And one great thing about women, we're not pushing the men away. No. We don't want to push them away. We want to work, work with them yes. differently, like they're pushing us away. They use every single way they possibly can. Harassment. If you're a woman, they think it's okay for them to touch you, to say whatever things they want with you. If you're a woman, you have to be able to, you know, be friendly with them so you can get a job, so you can get a promotion. So you have to look a certain way. Certain ways. You have to dress certain way to be attractive to them, to even work at their offices. But I can say I am blessed. I work with many men in the past. That close boss never once or uh, any of them have done anything to even make me feel different. I think it's a mentality too because mm -hmm. I don't think that I will uh, give them the opportunity. <laughs> but uh, I was like she was saying, knowing, yes, knowing who you your are, value, who you, who you are, and then place the boundaries. I've never found that. I always find men in my way that are very open to let a woman succeed, to let you be. My husband is one of them, he's one of my champions because he support me all the way. You can hear me on the radio, you hear me talking, and then you see, I will do that. He's ev she's everywhere, how does she do that? I heard that she was in Lakewood yesterday. Yet tomorrow I heard she's in Burlington. He's driving, not me. <laughs> so most of the time, he's behind the wheel, so he's driving. So at least I get, uh, I get his support. I get to work with Father Eve. Father Eve never think that because I'm a woman, so there are certain things that he will not allow me to do. Uh -huh. Actually, any opportunity that he has, he needs somebody to work for him, can you do this? Can you help? He have his close hand, somebody who are very close to him. It's a woman. Uh -huh. So you, when you find those men on your way that do not stop you, that allow you to be who you are, this is how you excel. And I say that we need uh, more women in policy and more men like them that will say, yes, I will be supporting you. I will be there for you. And one thing we need to teach our kids, especially young Haitian kids, because I'm, that's, uh, they are in my environment, girls. You see so many girls growing up, don't only really hope to find a rich man. Yeah. Why is that? Why can't they be rich? Why can't they work? Why can't we teach them? You can be rich. Why? How are men that rich? They work, they go to school, they study, because they give them more opportunity to study back in the days. You can say that because we were supposed to clean, we were supposed to do dishes, and they study. But now things have changed. Because things change, take the opportunity. Go to school, be somebody, and then Gain your place at that table. You do not need a man to be a doctor. You do not need a man to be a lawyer. You need yourself. Yes. You study hard, you're gonna make it, and don't expect it's a man that's gonna give you a place. Definitely you need a man behind you by your side to help you if that is the case. But some women make it by themselves. They don't have a husband, they don't have no family, but they still make it. That's that mentality we need to teach our young girls to be successful on their own, knowing that they can do it, 
They don't have to expect a rich man and then their life miserable because the rich man, all they do, go to work, come back home, I'm tired. They don't even have time to look at you. And back then, then you have to go look somewhere else because your husband don't have time. So avoid that, try, <laughs> that life for yourself and get a job, uh, get educated, go to school and be somebody for yourself. I'm glad that you mentioned you want to see more women in politics because yes. I'm going yes. back and yes. 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 yes, going back to be the candidate for mayor of Boynton Beach. But I like a lot of things Pauline mentioned because um, it's all come to self-worth. We always think, a lot of us think that somebody have to give us something. Mm -hmm. No, go for it. I remember when I moved, I love my parents' house. I, my sister rented a, a, an apartment. I went to my sister and then I moved out of my sister's house. I bought my own place. Mm -hmm. I was not married. I was a single woman. I bought my own house. And people are like, you buy, because we have not only the young, we have a mentality that we are not able to do things by ourselves. If we're not married, we can't buy a house. No, go buy your own house and then let the husband come to your house. Maybe you can rent this one and go buy another one together. Do things, learn to do things by yourself. Yes, in politics, you sit on the table and do not afraid women to run for office. Because I believe and I still believe this is the era of women. And we are going to make it. You may not win the first time like I like like me, but keep on trying, keep on going for it. Keep your eyes on the price and go for it. You don't need to have somebody to be supporting you for you to be able to do things. Do it on your own. When I was ready, I, I, I use my campaign as a lot of examples because people call me. Oh, I want to help you, but because so-and-so is not helping you, I can't do it. I did not get approval from so-and-so before I help you. And it happens a lot. And I said, you know what? I am running. I was running for mayor, but I'm running. If somebody can catch me, then they can catch me. They can run after me and catch me. You don't need anyone to push you or to help you if you want to do this one, or you got to get a doctor for you to live a lavish life. You No. Pauline mentioned it, you can create your own riches. You have your own mind. God created us with the intelligence that we have to do whatever we, we want to do and whatever we can be. It's just have the desire to do it and go for it. You don't need to be married before you buy a house. Or if you have to go to doctor school, somebody got to help you. No, you can try do it by yourself. And you see, once you start, you have the desire to do something, you see how people will come and help you along the way. You may not, it depends on what you're doing, you may not be able to finish it by yourself. But once you start, because a lot of people who didn't help me did not want to help me, and afterwards, they're like, oh my God, I didn't know she was because going to, yeah, I didn't yeah. know she was going to do it like this. Uh -huh. I have people who work with me every day, like, oh my God, I never knew you were such of a hardworking woman. People would look at you and what you're doing before they decide to help you. So if you want to buy your own house, you're a single woman, go for it. You're a single man, go for it. Don't think I, you need a why to be keep up with the house, to clean the house. No, because you can clean your own house. <laughs> so buy your house. When the person come along, that's fine. They will help you with the mortgage. Maybe they want to stay in the same house. Maybe they don't want to stay in your house. Then you might get two houses now because the person say, okay, we're going to rent this one. We're going to buy another house. Whatever you want to do, go for it. What I would like to see more women in, to answer your, your question, Father, is and be, become an electrician, construction. Not the medic, it's not only the medical field doesn't design for women only. You don't have to stuck in the medical field. There's computer, there's technology, because of course the world is revolving in, in, around technology right now. So we all can get involved in these. There's a lot of professions women can get into. We don't have to stick to the medical field because most women, that's where you see them in the medical field. There's a whole lot you can do. Whatever it is, even if it's to go on the moon, you never see a woman do it before, just go for it because women, you can do whatever you put your mind into it, what the mind can conceive and the, you can achieve it. Just go for it, women. Do not limit yourself. We need to start limiting ourselves so we can reach our highest potentials. That's why I'm telling every single woman that out there, 
whatever the profession is. If a man is doing it, because the man is a person just like you, you can do it too. Except know that God created you to be a woman, not a man. Yes. <laughs> Very good. You yes. Have um, yes. I understand there is a lot of improvement on how women are treated this day, because before that it wasn't it wasn't this way. But I will encourage the women to keep it up, continue to better themselves. And talking about job, some women when they get a job, they're fighting for it. At the point they get the job and then they are just, okay, I have the job. You have to keep working, keep doing it right. Improving yourself. Yes, improve yourself. Very good. So like you mentioned, it, you want to see more women involved in politics. And this year in the US there was a record Yes. for the Congress of Women we have and at the address of the uh, Union, at the Union State address and then they really show that they were uh, white dress and almost all of them sit the same place like yes. to show women are coming. So it's a great thing in politics women are really trying to lead uh, the country and even for the Democratic Party we see many women are uh, running for president and in the primary probably we have more women uh, running so so that's something it will happen so that's uh, you will see very soon but in your opinion do you think women know their value the impact they make in our society do you think they really know their value? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Um, I think there is a mentality that women always think they are the weak. Part. But we have, just like I said before, there are a lot of improvements. Women start to believe in themselves they'll start to do work to show that they can do whatever men do, uh, can do, they can do it as well. Yes, I don't think women know their values yet because, I'm sorry, we do have a president in the United States um, that do not value women. But still, we have many women voting for him. So that is a problem. So you ask yourself, what are these women thinking? Uh, or president who think that it's okay to touch any woman at any place in the body without their authorization. And those women think it is okay for him to be president. It is okay for them to vote for someone like that. Someone who treat women like second class citizen. <laughs> so therefore you ask yourself, there is a problem among us. So either we don't value ourselves, we do not know who we are, we do not know our potentiality, that's the reason we let others to oppress us. It's like we're enjoying it. Like they say, some women love when their husband beat them up. So that, that's the same thing. You, you like, is it that mentality? Because why would I elect somebody who doesn't value me? What the example that I'm setting for my kids? If you have girls who are, uh, 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 you, you have uh, girls, you have daughters, what are you telling them? You are telling them it's okay if they go to school for a man to touch them? Are you telling your girls it is okay if they go to work, the boss can touch them whichever way they w he wants to touch them, please them? That's the, that is the message we're sending. But we have women who stand behind that man blindly. So we have a problem. We need to value ourselves, we need to know who we are, and then we need to make sure that other people value us. And the way we're going to do that is once we know who we are, how much we want, and we're going to have other people value who we are. I think, uh, you want to go first? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I think yes, um, the question is, do women know their value? I think it's getting there little by little. It's getting there slowly but surely. Yes. Because now that we see women are more involved in a lot of things, yes. Pauline mentioned um, 
<laughs> the president, um, there are people that's going to put you down. And it's all come about to the self-worth, again, that we talked about. People are in, women are getting involved more, but they just have to know what they have to offer. And just like you mentioned, a lot of women are getting into politics. But once upon a time, women couldn't even vote. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yes. So yes. We, we have come from a very long mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. and we are moving forward. And what I will ask every woman to do is continue to move forward, because we do have a lot to offer, and we have to step up and be in the table. Even they're trying to keep you under the table, but always find your way on the table where the decisions are making, the decisions that you are making in the house. Stop showing weaknesses and show our strength because we do have a lot of strength and we have a lot of things to offer. Continue the fight because it takes a, a lot of lives, a long way for us to get here today. Me, Goline, a little girl who was born in Haiti, grew up in Haiti and came and ran for mayor for the city of Boynton Beach that have 76,000 people. We have come from a long way because, um, but it took sacrifices from my parents who took, you know, took the boat to come over here and sacrifice their lives and my mom who sacrificed their lives. We need to start being an example for the young women to let them know that they are better than this, they can do better than that. Because if we leave great example for them, they will follow. Is it going to be easy? No, it's not going to be easy. But they will have the role models as women. Um, I, when I, I ran for office again, and right after my election, right, while my election was going on, somebody gave me a book called Women in Politics. So we can start instilling into the children what we hope for them to be or what they can be. Because they are the product of their environment. If they are exposing where women are doing great things, women are being successful, they are growing up to think that they can do it too. We just have to push them no matter how hard it is. They have to go for it because like we mentioned, challenge is going to be their number one thing, their one number one enemy. It will be challenging. But are we getting there? I believe we are coming yes. from a long way yes. and we are moving, moving forward moving and one forward. day we're going to have a woman president. That's what it is. <laughs> I hope. That one day is a Haitian born. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah, because I can't be the president. I was born. I was born and raised in Haiti. But you guys, like we were mentioned earlier, Father, our I think our children, because by when the 2000 census mentioned that in 2017 there's uh, over 300,000 Haitian born children in Florida alone. That means that we have a lot of future presidents, and some of them are women. Yeah. So we have to teach them. We have to let them know they can do it and they can be it. Yes, I do believe that. I, I do, do believe, believe and yes, uh, I, believe. I thank you again for coming to answer those questions. It's very important the place women really play in our society today. And then uh, Pauline mentioned there is uh, uh, they behind any successful woman, there is a man, yes. but it's probably the reverse. Yes. The, behind any successful yes. man, yes. there is a woman. So yes. it's uh, the situation, we know women, they are very important in our society, and we know now many people will understand they need to give their places, and especially uh, concerning the, the, the wage most of the time they don't give the women the same wage with men. Anyway, thank you for coming. Bishop, I don't know if you have a concluding word well, for God made us male and female. <laughs> male yes. and female, he made us. So we have to work together. Certainly, the women and men are partners and they have equal dignity. We hope that in the future that we will be better recognized. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Haïti belle femme, on marche dans tout sang. Moi, je me joue moins vrai fou, pour avoir craigné par vous. On s'appitit en traille, va chercher chimé la caille, pour y'a sa vie chanter. Haïti chéri, où c'est maman misère, où c'est reine qui joue dans quel Haïti sous cabane l'hôpital, on bat le soin natif natal. On s'appétit sa taille, va chercher chimé la taille, où y'a sa vie de chanter ensemble. Haïti chéri. Je la gagne pour son nez, lumière au gagne pour lui nez, sous grand chemin. Soiseau yo va chanter, abeille yo va voler, les belles fleurs yo va lever. La vie va sourire, c'est dans tout quel homme blaye. A toute force n'a pas dit, Haïti chéri. Cloche la gagne pour son nez, lumière au gagne pour lui nez. Zoazo yo va chanter, abe yo va voler, les belles fleurs yo va lever. La vie va sourire, les dents tout quel homme mon blaye. A toute force n'a pas dit, Haïti chéri. La 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 la. La 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 la